Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Frequency Selective Power Sensors. This presentation will explain the fundamentals of frequency selective, or receiver-based power sensors, and explain how they differ from traditional RF power sensors. Let's start with a brief overview of RF power measurement. Measuring the power of a signal is one of the most fundamental tasks in RF design, debug, and production. Although power can be measured with many different instruments, the most accurate and cost-effective way of doing this is using an RF power sensor. In addition to simply measuring power, some types of power sensors have additional functions, such as the ability to generate a power versus time trace. This is useful when viewing the envelope of a pulsed or other time-varying signal. Traditional RF power sensors can be divided into three general categories based on their underlying technology, that is, how they measure power. The categories are thermal sensors, diode sensors, and wideband sensors. Each power sensor type has different strengths and weaknesses, and therefore some sensors are better suited for certain applications than other sensors. We'll start with thermal sensors. Thermal sensors measure RF power by absorbing it and converting it into heat. A thermocouple then turns this heat into an internal voltage that's proportional to the RF power. The biggest advantage of a thermal power sensor is that it's extremely accurate, and they also have excellent linearity making them the sensor of choice when high precision is required. Thermal sensors do, however, suffer from a number of disadvantages. The most serious of these is poor sensitivity, meaning that thermal sensors can only be used to measure relatively high power signals. They also have a small dynamic range and lower measurement speed. Another way that we can measure RF power is by using diodes. Diodes are used to rectify the power, that is, convert AC to DC, and the sensor then samples the level of the rectified signal. Many diode-based power sensors have multiple paths, with one diode per path and different input attenuation per path. Based on the level of the input signal, different measurement paths are chosen in order to ensure that the diode is operating in its so-called square law region, which ensures accurate results. Diode-based power sensor advantages include good accuracy and linearity and an excellent dynamic range, especially when compared to thermal sensors. The main disadvantage of diode sensors is that their low video bandwidth makes trace measurements difficult. Unlike multipath diode sensors, a wideband power sensor uses only a single diode over the entire measurement range. Using only a single diode does create the potential for nonlinearities, so digital signal processing and correction factors are used to compensate for these effects. The main advantage of a wideband power sensor is that the wider bandwidth and higher sample rate enable the measurement of pulse signals. They also have very good dynamic range and accuracy. Even with this wider bandwidth, a potential disadvantage of wideband power sensors is that their video bandwidth may still be insufficient for measuring very narrow pulses. It's important to remember that these three types of traditional power sensors measure all of the power within their bandwidth. If multiple signals are present, the result is the sum of the power in all the signals. Frequency selective sensors, on the other hand, only measure within a user-defined frequency range or filter width. As a result, these sensors can measure the power of a specific signal, even in the presence of multiple signals. Frequency selectivity also enables certain types of frequency selective measurements, such as ACLR or the adjacent channel leakage ratio, since this measurement requires the independent measurement of five different signal powers. Frequency selective power sensors, such as the Rodian Schwartz NRQ6, are based on receiver technology. The most important advantage of these receiver based sensors is that they're frequency selective. As we just discussed, this allows measurement of the power of one signal in the presence of multiple signals and frequency selective measurements, such as ACLR. But in addition, these power sensors offer improvements in both sensitivity and dynamic range, as well as much higher measurement speed. And like a wideband power sensor, a receiver-based power sensor can also support power versus time, or trace measurements. Let's look at some of these features in a bit more detail. Sensitivity and dynamic range are important when measuring low power signals or signals with a wide range of possible powers. In particular, traditional power sensors have difficulty in measuring very low power signals. A receiver-based power sensor, such as the NRQ6, can measure signals in the range of minus 130 to plus 120 dBm, giving it a dynamic range of 150 dB. This is clearly superior to the other types of power sensors. 
Measurement speed is also an important consideration in RF power measurements, and the classic trade-off is between accuracy and speed. Higher measurement speeds will reduce accuracy, and higher accuracy requires longer measurement times. Let's look at some typical measurement times for a fixed accuracy of 0.01 dB. Notice that measurement time increases as the measured power level decreases. In all cases, receiver-based power sensors offer a significant advantage in measurement speed, and this improvement is quite dramatic at lower power levels. Power versus time, or trace measurements, are also possible using receiver-based power sensors. This is similar to the functionality provided by wideband power sensors, and is useful when measuring time-varying or pulse signals. Because of their wide measurement bandwidth, receiver-based power sensors can measure very steep-edged pulses, that is, signals with very short rise and fall times. So let's summarize what we've learned. Receiver-based power sensors, such as the Rodian Schwartz NRQ6, provide significant advantages over traditional thermal, diode, and wideband power sensors. These advantages fall into three main categories, the first of which is frequency selectivity. Frequency selective sensors measure signal power only within a user-defined frequency range, or filter width. This also enables frequency-specific measurements, such as ACLR. Additional advantages are very high dynamic range and excellent sensitivity. And finally, receiver-based power sensors have greatly improved measurement speed. Not only are receiver-based sensors much faster than traditional sensors, but this improvement is even more dramatic at lower power levels. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Frequency Selective Power Sensors. Thanks for watching.